inspired by the trip Steph and I made to Barnes and Nobles. Um, we noticed that a lot of a lot of books, both in young adult and adult, are following these same annoying patterns. So we compiled this list of the ten things that the writers do that annoy us. Hope you guys enjoy. Number ten, over description. Grass is grass. Trees are trees. They are the same color in every country, at least to my knowledge. Unless there is something unique, it does not need to be described in immense detail. Don't overly describe actions, clothes, or people. Unless there's a fight scene, the muscle movements of a person are not necessary. Clothing is clothing. It's not that much different. There's not that much different about it. All we need to know is type, length, color, and little special details. Example, Becky was wearing a long red checkered scarf. Done. You want to use fancy language? Use a thesaurus. You can, instead of using long, you can use flowing. Instead of red, you can use scarlet. There you go. You don't need to use a whole bunch of words. When you know how to use a thesaurus, you don't need to babble on about description. When describing people, either do it in small actions Example, Larissa tucked a strand of blonde hair behind her ear. You know she's blonde. Or you do it in one big chunk. If you do it in one big chunk, you do it once, then you never do it again until the sequel. If you describe a person in detail once, there is no need to do it 20 more times. Small reminders are like fine, but you don't need to repeat it every time we see them. If their eyes are blue, we assume their eyes are blue next 20 pages. Don't need to repeat it all the time. Number nine, don't force ideas. Allow a reader to draw their own conclusions about a book. Do not force feed them a concept by having it repeated a hundred times. Learn to use symbolism, motifs, and illusion to support your theme. Do not ruin the thinking process by telling us everything right there and then. The back cover of a book is not supposed to be the entire book in a nutshell. It's supposed to give you a little hint so you can look into it. Do not give us every detail of the book in the back. Number eight is a combination of both dumbing down plots and writing personal fantasies. Boy meets girl. Girl falls in love with boy. Boy falls in love with girl. Drama for the sake of drama. The end. That's bullshit and that's basically what's being published. You know, what happened to complex plots that made you think and had a moral lesson within the whole story? Some writers nowadays are just writing personal fantasies and publishing them. The problem is that personal fantasies are often very, very, very simple. We want everything. Therefore, we give our characters everything and put a little drama into the mix to give it a plot that we call the story. Instead of writing fantasies and dreams, people should write nightmares. They may be dark, but I can assure you they will be much more interesting than reading about how this girl who's never been in love before meets the boy of her dreams and he's so perfect and bloody bloody blah no one cares. Number seven, the average girl plot. Not, not only has this plot been overdone, it is rarely ever done well. Partly because actual average doesn't sell. If stories had average girl in them, no one would be interested because no one likes average. They either have to be above so we can achieve to be like them or below so we can scorn them. As a result, in books you make the average girl perfect, but then make her humble so the two sort of even each other out. That is not average. If your female lead is well-liked, middle-income, smart, witty, well-mannered, and has more than two love interests, that's not average. Number six, stereotypes are not character development. The dumb blonde, the shallow blonde, the hot-tempered redhead, the witty brunette, the goth, the prep, the fashionista. They are all labels and have no place in a novel. If, your if you have a character and their personality is one big stereotype, they should not be in a book. Because if they don't have a personality of their own, how are they supposed to be interesting? Example, in Twilight, Rosalie Hale is basically the dumb, shallow, blonde, vain stereotype. Done. Alice is the fashionista stereotype. Emmett is the big brother stereotype. Their labels and their characters do not transcend that. Except for Rosalie, who does it slightly, but then she goes back right being to being the dumb, shallow, vain, blonde 